Welcome to Arts Talk TV, supporting the arts community and giving it a voice. Hi, I'm Karina Lawrence and welcome to Arts Talk TV. We're here at the Coolangatta Sands Alley Bar, which is a great venue that offers live music and fantastic food located on the corner of Coolangatta's beautiful beachfront. I'm so excited to introduce you to our next guest on the show today. He is a world-renowned artist that has had extensive experience in the performing arts industry, from choreographing with large-scale events to film and television, and also receiving acclaimed industry awards. Please welcome none other than Nathan Wright. Hi. Hi, it's so great to have you here on the show. Thanks it's for joining to be here. us. No, it's great. So tell us, you've got obviously a lot of credit to your wonderful career. Where did it all begin? When I was really young, my dad had dreams for me to be a soccer player. And I think I was really intrigued, I think, because of the outfit. And then I kind of got there and I just kind of, I ran away, I ran up a hill and I remember just yelling out, I just want to dance at the age wow. of five. Which I'm not sure if that's every father's dream at that age, but he took me to dancing the following week and that's really how it all kind of started. I think it was something that I personally wanted to do. And what about training? Did you train in all different aspects of, of dance initially? Yeah, I absolutely. I did. I started training in a really small town hall in, in, a, in a suburb called Bockham Hills in Sydney. Mm -hmm. And I went there and I was the only boy. And it wasn't until we relocated to Queensland and I enrolled myself at a dancing school in Brisbane and that's where I really opened up to all different styles like jazz and tap and classical, song yeah. and dance, musical theatre, all those bigger genres in terms of style. So at what stage did you really feel like that you, you desired to pursue it as a career? It's just a place where I always felt safe and I think at that age around that 12, 13 year old self, um, especially when you're a young guy in the midst mm. of, at that time, not a very accepting place of mm. male dancers. Did you suffer a lot from like bullying or? Oh God, absolutely. Oh my God, awfully. How did that affect you? Um, uh, oh, hugely. It affects everyone, you know, mm. and I'm, I think at the end of the day, uh, what I try to do now is to help in any way I can for uh, anyone's mental health yep. in terms of if they're struggling. Mm. I feel though now life is more accepting. A 360 moment, I was in grade 12 at high school and you know, by that point, bullying was so bad. Mm. And I remember being in homeroom one morning, and one of them tapped me on the shoulder, and I was like, "Well, it's been a great life, <laughs> you know, it's been wonderful." Oh. But he actually said, "Oh, I saw you dance on Friday night," and literally, I just went white. I was like, "Wow, this is it." And he's, but he was one of these guys was dating one of the girls in another competition, and they happened just to be watching. And he, this guy, was the captain of the football team at the time, and I remember him saying, "Oh my God, that was just amazing." Are you doing something like that again? And I was literally so wow. kind of taken back. So the little short time I had yeah. left at school, I enjoyed those last few months. So now getting into some of your long list of credits, you've choreographed at the Commonwealth Games, the yep. Pacific Games opening ceremony, Sochi Winter Olympic Games opening ceremony, the London Olympics, um, the Delhi flag handover ceremony, yep. Vancouver Winter Olympics. Yep. Special Olympics and the Asian Games. Yes, obviously Dave my Atkins. roles have obviously grown over that time. Sure. And I personally didn't deliver the London Olympics. I'd love to say that I did. But obviously I worked, yes, in London, I worked part of a choreographic team. I was doing a musical called Mamma Mia at the time here in Australia. And I had some really dear friends in Doha, in Qatar. Um, and David Atkins was the creative director and the producer of the Asian Games in Doha. And just as the musical was finishing, I got a phone call from a really dear friend who was working on it. And she said, Jason Coleman, who obviously is a huge driving force in our industry, they said he was looking for an assistant. Long story short, off I went to Doha, and that's how it all started. Wow. But it just opened my mind to the possibility, and it just introduced me to incredible experiences in different culture. It just opened my mind to mm. what, what is really possible and what's out there in this great big wide world. And when you think there are events actually every year, we might not know about all of them, but people, there are these event families that literally go from event to event to event. And from being Jason's assistant to being a choreographer, to being the director of choreography for the opening ceremony of Sochi, to be the artistic director when I was in Azerbaijan. So it's kind of really been this growing process because they sure. are big. When you take one of these on, 
Uh, when I did Azerbaijan in 2016 and 2017, I relocated to Azerbaijan. I took a break after that and didn't do another one to the Commonwealth Games here in the Gold Coast in 2018. Okay. Just to choreograph the opening ceremony only. I was like, I can do that. Mm. And I always wanted to come back and share my experiences with people of, you know, from Queensland, because yeah. I've done all these ceremonies that I've never done one in Australia, yeah. especially in my home state. So that was a real, special. that was really special, yeah. really special. And would you say like working and progressing, obviously you have greater creative control? I, I learned to collaborate. Mm -hmm. You can't do a ceremony without collaboration. It can't just be one person. It's too big. It's too, too big. Yeah. And you want to rely on all those people yeah. around you. So I think as long as the vision is clear and the direction is this, and mm. uh, I love watching people just create in a space and offer ideas that you're like, I didn't even think of that. But it's not, it's done in a brilliant way. So it's just about making the best show possible. I have 30,000 people for the London Olympics. Wow. We auditioned for like two and a half months in a big film studio in East London mm -hmm. with three major studios that just ran like, I think three, three to five sessions a day. And there was 200 people in every session. So in regards to auditions, when you have so many people coming through, yeah. What are the standouts in that environment for the large scale events that... Personality. You're asking people to give up their lives. Mm -hmm. You're asking people to, you know, leave their children two nights a week to come to rehearsals. You're asking for such a major commitment. You need to give them every part of your soul. Mm -hmm. So when they come into that room, they're like, this is worth going to work tomorrow and saying, right, I'm doing the London Olympics. I need you to work around my schedule. Like, you need to give them that. That's the least I can do. Mm -hmm. And the whole team does because we're saying come on this journey with us because yeah. we know it will it changes people's lives it brings people together that would never normally come together and it, that's that's a beautiful thing to see and you'll start rehearsals for a cast group there might be 800 in it wow. but six months later when you're coming to the final dress rehearsal the connection the friendships you walk through the stadium and you see these people crying because they're so excited and they've been on this journey and it's it is the most amazing thing to be a part of. Moving into the film side of things, yeah. Moulin Rouge, The Great Gatsby, Baz yeah. Luhrmann, yeah. and Happy Feet yes. with George Miller. Yeah. What, the difference of experience? I was 19 years old, just moved to Sydney. My agent called me and said there's an audition for Moulin Rouge. And so I went along this audition, over three and a half thousand people auditioned for this film. And I went into a room and I was like, oh my God, these people are amazing. That's how it started in um, a choreographer called John O'Connell who choreographed the film. Because yep. obviously he wanted everyone of a certain height and I am challenged in the height department. And I remember he said to me long, many years after, he said he actually went to Baz and said, listen, are you really set on having everyone the same height? Because there's this guy that I would really love to use. And that's, that was really kind of the turning point. Yeah, what a great compliment, hey? Yeah. Yeah, and I also think at that point, I just didn't know what I was going in for. I just went into a room and thought, oh, I, and I, I kind of miss that yeah. feeling of just being a little bit naive going, yeah. well, this will be fun, because it really takes the Not, pressure off yourself. Yeah, and I you're just, say that. You know, so I really, yeah, and nowadays I really try to encourage people to focus more on what they're thinking about mentally when they go in the room to help them in that area. Do you think that is the, the key there though, is that if, if people really focus on their own unique self-belief system, yeah. then that's gonna give them the ability to showcase their best selves? I taught yesterday here on the Gold Coast some amazing people. And before we started even doing the dance, I went around the room and said, right, what are you thinking, what are you thinking? Yeah. And they all just started blurting out all these things that were going through their mind. And I was like, aren't you exhausted? Mm. And you haven't even done anything. Mm. I said, you need to know that everyone is going through that same process that's next to you, but it's, it's, it's about bringing that in and focusing just on your moment. If you are constantly looking at them, going, why, why, you're, you're just giving everything that you have to that. Yeah, you're giving away your energy. Just giving away it all. Mm. At the end of the day, like, you, it's you. You mm. are your marketing device. Mm. And I have very different opinions of all that kind of stuff on social media today compared to when I kind of grew up. I feel people in class now, it takes a while for them to get them to where they need to be within your hour and a half that you have with them. 
because they have this misconception of they need to be perfect, they can't make mistakes. Yes. And I'm like, well, no, that's what class is about. Class that's is, how you learn. That's how you learn. You can't be brilliant at everything all the time. And it, that, well, you're supposed that to, me to be there the as a student, yeah. ultimately. Yeah, know? but it, and it's just part of the journey. But yeah. that's the thing that I, it's that balance between mm. what you see online to what you. The reality. The reality, mm. yes. But at the end of the day, I feel you are your best boss in terms of what you're best at, what you can offer, and you need to hold on to that because that's it's, it, yeah. it's just you. I think yeah. there's also this thing of, I need to be a success now, I need to have this now. Well, you don't. It's gonna be there, it's gonna be everywhere. There is an amazing world out there of opportunity in, yeah. in terms of the arts. It doesn't mm -hmm. just have to be just here. If things aren't, you're thinking the way they are here, well, go discover what's around the world. And also what you want to discover within it, yeah. you know, and if that's the magic of it that you get to travel with those experiences, I mean, you've traveled all over the world, experienced yeah. the different cultures, yeah. um, and enjoyed your creative work. Yeah. No one's in a position to tell you that you're gonna fail or you're gonna succeed. No one knows the answer to that. That's why you need to go on your journey. Yeah. And, but don't get me wrong, I've had many, ex many experiences with people like, you will never work. It will happen. It's, yeah. uh, you know, I'm not sitting here because it was just a fun ride. No. I've, I've sacrificed family, weddings, Birthdays, like living, in, I have sacrificed so much of my life. And yeah. if something does happen for someone else, how exciting. Yes. It's a chance yes. for someone to say, well, that's a step forward. That yes. means that's happening. Maybe this is the next thing. Yeah. You know? Working as an associate choreographer to like as a regular choreographer, what's the, explain to our viewers, what's the difference of, um, I guess, roles and yeah. expectation, responsibilities? I started, I, I think, even as a performer, I always knew I wanted to swap sides eventually and be more on a creative kind of side, but I really wanted to learn the process. I'm all about a process. Mm -hmm. I really love to understand how you get there. Yep. Um, so I started off as a dance captain in musicals, yep. where you, as a dance captain, your job is to, you know, to keep an eye on the show. If there's any issues at the hour call, you might have to re-space things, re-block things, and it's keeping you know, the choreographer's vision the way it needs to be kept in the show. And then from there, I started to become an assistant. So then I really, I wasn't in the show as a performer. I would assist in terms of the auditions where I would execute the choreography for the choreographer. And basically I'm that middle person that translates between the choreographer to the auditionees, the material. Yep. And then coming into rehearsals, I would you know, lead a lot of the rehearsals with the choreographer, allowing them to sit and observe and watch and ask me to change things that they would like changed. Yep. It's really facilitating what they desire, what mm -hmm. they need. Um, and then becoming into an associate. Associate for me is, is a, a far more collaborative role. Yep. It's, it's an opportunity to have a strong voice with the choreographer. And the way I have worked it as being an associate when I worked, even when I was uh, Cha Cha's associate, it was very much of, it was an open space in terms of, you know, I, I felt confident to offer ideas yeah. without overstepping the mark, of yeah. course. At the end of the day, it was always their vision or this is what I want, but I felt I could offer ideas in that area to say, do you mean something like this? Or, you know, just because I yeah. think that's also the associate's job is to also help spark a bit of of the creative process as yeah, well. Definitely. It's about creating the best work possible and as long as the choreography is very clear in terms of vision and ideas, mm. it's it's a wonderful opportunity to co-create with someone. Yeah, definitely. And then obviously coming into choreography is just a chance to, you know. Unleash your creativeness, literally. Sometimes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then I'm sure if you have assistants working for you, then yeah. they would offer the same kind of support. Absolutely, I think that comes from the top. I think it's always good when someone says, this is how I work. I love this, I love collaboration. At the end of the day, yes, the buck stops with me, so I will welcome any idea. If it works, we're gonna grab it. If it doesn't, we'll save it for another yeah. time. Yeah. But for me, it's really important. You're not bringing these people in around you not to have a voice. At the end of the day, if you take any job, you need to understand what you're saying yes to. So mm. you can't take a job then complain and whinge about everything. Mm. If you have said, what is the job? Yeah and you're told what the yeah. job is and these are the requirements. And if you sign that dotted line, well, that's what you're yeah. doing. And I think that's why it's very good to be open and honest and have those kind of conversations. And I don't think there's anything wrong with asking, what does my job require? Yeah. Okay, so getting into TVC for Nova. Yeah. Um, Helpman Awards, So You Think You Can Dance. Oh, yes. The Astro Awards. Yeah. The Sydney and Melbourne Comedy Festival. Yes. 
Strictly Come Dancing. Yeah, in the UK. It is probably one of the highest rating shows in the UK and I just want to be really clear, I am not a ballroom choreographer. I'm a choreographer yeah. and I like to be quite eclectic. Yeah. So obviously I'm the choreographer for the Rocky Horror Show and so they reached out to me okay. and they said, would you come and do a version of the Time Warp? But it was wonderful, it was like two worlds kind of came together and we found a fusion and it was, uh, it was a great push and challenge for me. Did you do much preparation on that side of oh, things? Oh, huge. Yeah. Oh my God, so much in terms of yeah. when I teach now, for me it's about understanding the history of where things came from and I feel nowadays people have so many options to look up things because phones are in people's hands. Yes. So uh, I find it really interesting when I teach and I ask questions and people just look at me blankly. Yeah. You say to people, look, you're not going to go and audition for something you don't know what the show's about. Exactly. You know, who's in the show, who's written the show, who staged the show. Even though you, you're, you're going to audition for the ensemble or a supporting role, you know, I would hope anyone would go in knowing everything because it's just about understanding how that whole thing came together. Breathless movement director. Yeah. This one was all about research because I didn't know much about the show. It was a brand new show. They wanted some movement based on a certain style of the 50s. So I really did a lot of research on all different styles. Yeah. I just try to sometimes think outside the box yeah. in terms of how I present things. It was a really wonderful experience. And for me, it was learning about the subtleties of television, but it's not something that I would feel extremely And it is a different world, it isn't is it? It is so yeah. different. You mean you can cut, they can be somewhere else? What? Like, <laughs> yeah. I was like, I was that naive. I really love this experience because I was working with just actors. They wanted to feel confident, they wanted to look a certain way. So for me, it was a real partnership which I absolutely loved. And then I kind of have taken that experience and put it more into how I choreograph and how I try to tell stories through choreography with more narration and all those kind of things. Direction and choreography for the stage. Yeah. Uh, you've uh, a long list of credits here. Rocky Horror Show in the UK and South Africa. Yeah. Aspects of Love, Xanadu at the Hayes Theatre, Crazy For You in the UK, High Society, The Rocky Horror Show, as you mentioned, which was a UK tour, London Playhouse, and yeah. in Australia. Yeah. Uh, the Adams Family, yeah. Guys and Dolls, Avenue Q. Well, I think, I think Avenue Q was kind of like my first uh, big change, really. I'd been an associate for a couple of years, many years, and Avenue Q was the first time it was being remounted out of Broadway okay. and the West End that wasn't going to be the original creative team. I was offered to choreograph. Yeah. It was kind of like the first big thing on my own, really, of, yeah. of that level. King Kong. I was probably in the project for about a year. Yeah. And then uh, I was offered another opportunity and that opportunity was wonderful. Yes. But this opportunity was allowed, was allowing me to go to London and okay. it was to do the Olympics. Yeah. It's something that I... I always wanted to do a yeah. Summer Olympics. I hadn't done a yeah. Summer Olympics. And wow. So uh, that was that was probably the last show I did with Cha Cha. Okay, now okay. we have a really fun little system here at the end of Arts Talk TV. Yeah. We have a shutter speed challenge. Are you up for it? Sure. So basically this is whatever pops into your head. Oh, it's lots of good fun, so watch out viewers. Here we go. Okay. Last song you listen to. The song Company from the musical company from the 2018 London cast recording and I was pretending I was the leading female role. Oh my gosh, that would have been a car disco. It really was. Yeah. I was very good. What does creativity mean to you? Um, an opportunity to be exactly what you want it to be. Mm, beautiful. Person you'd most like to meet? Creatively, mm -hmm. I would love to have met Gene Kelly or Bob Fosse. Mm. What would you ask them? I would love to understand their process. Yeah. I just would, I, I find insight. process is mm. the most fascinating thing. Last piece of art that has really affected you? My youngest nephew, he's drawing. What would you miss most about the arts? My friends. Yeah. Okay, if you had to label creativity with a colour, what colour would it be? Oh, like the colour of the sky like two days ago. It was the most extraordinary, like sequenty blue. It was mm. just incredible. What's on your bedside table at the moment? Uh, a photo of, on one side is a photo of my family and the other side is a photo of myself and my fiance. What chore do you most dislike doing? <laughs> See, I love all chores. I would say uh, cleaning the bathroom. Mm. In one word, what does the arts mean to you? It has been a place that has allowed me to be my truest self. Safe. Love it. Yeah. The insight and the input, uh, you have such a gorgeous sense of realness oh. to you, Nathan, that just thank comes you. through and through. So thank you so much for oh joining God, us. Oh, you're so welcome.
Thanks for joining us. We look forward to seeing you at our next episode.